she taught me to do. It was how to make a proper cup of tea. I drink Yorkshire tea nowadays. Yorkshire tea, like tea used to be. Sunday at 6.30, The Family Film, The Karate Kid. Must make sacred pact. I promise teach karate. At 8.30, this karate kid discovers he's been framed in another classic collection of home video howlers. At 9, look who's talking to... You mess with my mother, you mess with me. A movie premiere, Sunday. reports live on Monday, just hours after the NATO deadline expires. We go live to Las Vegas for the Jackson Family Honors Report, plus in therapy with the man who treated Jackson and Elton John, a GMTV exclusive next week. Now on YTV, we join ITN for the news. Good evening, the news and sport from ITN. Tonight's headlines. John Major and Albert Reynolds insist that peace plan goes on with or without the IRA and optimism in Sarajevo as the UN deadline approaches. And in sport, Wales beat France for the first time in 12 years and set their sights on the Grand Slam. John Major and the Irish Prime Minister Albert Reynolds today insisted they would continue their drive to bring peace to Northern Ireland with or without the IRA. The two leaders, meeting for the first time since the Downing Street Declaration was signed in December, agreed to initiate a new round of negotiations. Two months after they signed the Declaration in Downing Street, the two Prime Ministers met this morning to review progress. Their initiative hasn't had any discernible impact on the level of violence, and the governments are anxious to keep up the pressure on the paramilitaries. They're making it clear they can't simply sit and wait for a response, and will now push on and try and find an overall settlement. No one, no one should be able to veto progress on the talks. We've made clear what uh, Sinn Féin needs to do to join the constitutional process. They're free to come in, they're free to stay out if that is what they choose. But what they can't do is hold up our determination to continue with the talks process and endeavour to find a solution. This is a new hope, a new direction for to provide the opportunity to get a lasting peace in Ireland and a broad-based agreement based on the sets of principles that we agreed on here on the 15th of December. The meeting was relatively short and largely symbolic and this afternoon the two Prime Ministers moved on to watch the Rugby International together. They were trying to underline today that bringing peace to Northern Ireland remains a priority for both governments. The Downing Street Declaration was, above all else, designed to bring an end to the IRA's campaign. There's still no clear indication yet what the Republicans' final response will be, but both governments remain cautiously optimistic that in the long run, their initiative will succeed. Tom Bradby, ITN, in Downing Street. Traders are counting the cost after terrorists unleashed a firebomb blitz on stores in London's West End. Police say the attacks on seven stores in and around the Oxford Street area bore all the hallmarks of the IRA. The fires caused damage running into hundreds of thousands of pounds. One shop was gutted and the others were slightly damaged. No one was injured. A leading Ulster bishop has attacked the IRA's hypocrisy in demanding police protection while murdering those who provide it. Dr Gordon McMullen, the Church of Ireland Bishop of Down and Dromore, was speaking at the funeral of a policeman killed earlier this week in a Republican area of Belfast. The first policeman to be murdered by the IRA this year was killed by a rocket as he protected Catholics from loyalist attacks in the markets area of Belfast. And today, the Catholic priest for the area was among hundreds of mourners at the funeral of Constable Johnston Beacom. Also present, loyalist politicians, including the Reverend Ian Paisley, who've said the IRA aren't serious in their claims that they want peace. In the two months since the signing of the Downing Street Declaration, the Provisionals have carried out over 40 attacks on the security forces and today a Church of Ireland bishop who spoke at the funeral said there was growing frustration at the lack of response from the IRA to the declaration. The possibility of peace seems to be drifting away 
because within paramilitary organizations, there ultimately is more desire to preserve violence than to achieve peace. The policeman was later buried privately on the eve of his daughter's first birthday. Ivan Little, ITN, Belfast. The British general in command of United Nations forces in Bosnia says he's confident NATO will not have to carry out its threat of airstrikes on Serb positions around Sarajevo. General Sir Michael Rose says the withdrawal of artillery is being hampered by heavy snow, but it should be completed before the NATO deadline at midnight tomorrow. According to the UN, the Serbian guns are coming down from the heights around Sarajevo. Armoured columns have again been seen, leaving the 20-kilometre exclusion zone. Bosnian Serb soldiers apparently happy to be away from the Sarajevo front line and the threat of NATO airstrikes. The UN say most of the Serbian heavy weapons are leaving the exclusion zone, but reporters have also been shown artillery pieces stockpiled in a Bosnian Serb barracks, one of eight collection areas where they'll be guarded by UN soldiers. The predominantly Muslim Bosnian government has complained that Serb weapons are merely being regrouped and are still within firing range of Sarajevo. Despite those protests, government forces continue to place their own weapons under supervision and the UN commander in Bosnia believes the threat of airstrikes is going away. Mainly, if there was a very changed set of strategic circumstances, can I see that either side would uh, renege on the um, deal which they had made so far and that we would be obliged to bomb. Appalling weather conditions in the mountains have hampered the withdrawal and the UN operation to verify the number of guns being moved. Any guns that can't be moved must now be disabled, otherwise they'll be subject to air attack. If promises are kept, the withdrawal of heavy weapons, both Serbian and Muslim, will be completed within the next few hours. But that will not mean that the siege will be broken, and it certainly won't mean that the suffering of the people will be over. The shelling has stopped, but 350,000 people remain trapped in the city, reliant on international charity to survive the winter. Paul Davis, ITN, Sarajevo. Two climbers have fallen to their deaths on Van Nevis in the Scottish Highlands. Rescue teams and a Royal Navy helicopter were called out to Britain's tallest mountain after the accident was reported by other climbers in the area. Now with today's sports stories, here's David Bowman. Wales kept alive their hopes of their first Grand Slam title since 1978 with an impressive 24-15 victory over last year's champions France. And their hopes rose as England's faded. Ireland the surprise winners at Twickenham. Wales now head the Five Nations Championship with three wins in three games. At Cardiff Arms Park, the Princess of Wales watched her adopted side take the lead just five minutes into the game with a penalty from Neil Jenkins. The French drew level, but then number eight Scott Quinnell took Wales further ahead. After picking up the ball from the line-out, he powered down the flank to score. As the game went on, the French rallied, captain Oliver Rumar touching down. In the closing moments, Quinnell set up a try for wing Nigel Walker, bringing the score to 24-15 and fueling Welsh hopes of their first Grand Slam for 16 years. At Twickenham, despite England scoring a penalty in the opening moments of the game, Ireland quickly drew level and a try from winger Simon Gagan put them into the lead. There were a few moments when England looked as though they were getting it together, but on the whole, their play was unimaginative. The score when the whistle went was 13-12 to Ireland, the first time captain Will Carling has ever lost a game against a home country at Twickenham. It was Cup Day in England and Scotland, but non-league Kidderminster can forget about Wembley. Lee Chapman's second-half goal put the Hammers through to the quarter-finals. Chelsea boss Glenn Hoddle was thankful to see his side through against First Division Oxford, who missed a last-minute penalty. At Ibrox, Rangers' Ali McCoist hit a splendid hat-trick to help Rangers through to the fifth round of the Scottish Cup. And in the Premiership, Blackburn have cut the gap at the top of the table to a mere seven points, thanks to David May's late goal against Newcastle, now five games without a win. In the First Division, Crystal Palace stay at the top after a one-all draw with Nottingham Forest. Forest looked good for all three points when their Norwegian international Lars Bahinen put them ahead in the second half. 
But ten minutes later, Damian Matthew fired his first goal for Palace since his signing from Chelsea. England made a good start on the first day of the first test in Jamaica before things got back to a more similar vein. Stewart and Atherton putting 121 on the board before Benjamin put an end to the partnership, Stewart making 70. A few minutes later, captain Mike Atherton brought up his 50 with a boundary, but then he too fell victim to Benjamin, and just a few minutes before tea, Smith went for a duck. A short time ago, England were 164 for three. Torval and Dean admitted tonight that they regretted their comeback in the Winter Olympics. Christopher Dean said the mental stress was much more than they'd expected. They're due to perform their original dance program tomorrow. Britain has another hope of a medal in Lillehammer in the two-man bobsleigh. After two runs, Mark Tout and brakeman Lenny Paul are in ninth position. And that's the way the news looks so far tonight. From David and me, good night. Good night. Hello, good evening. After a fairly fine Saturday for a fair few of us, albeit with a distinct nip in the air. So straight away, if we turn to our Met Office cloud scan sequence, we can see this cloud piling up all the while out to the west for some fairly heavy bursts to come during the next couple of hours, I'm afraid. Clear skies for the east, and that in turn tonight leads to a frost. Look at these dipping temperatures. A few slippery stretches. Do watch out for these. Out to the west, it's very much a case of following the progress of the rain inland, turning to sleet or snow on the higher ground. A dull, overcast feel to Sunday as we go into the morning on the whole, at least. Rain, sleet, snow, a bit of everything thrown in. Snow on the higher ground like the Pennines to begin with, but as the day ticks by, wandering into the Midlands as well as the southeast. Now that's because of all that cold continental air we've around at the moment. Now during the course of the afternoon, it should fade away and clear from an easterly direction. Maybe a glimmer of brightness for the southwest. Northern Ireland stays cloudy, wet and snow on the hills. With temperatures cold in the east, 2 to 4, 36 to 39, a raw feel, a shade up on this out to the west. Good night. <laughs> Clint Eastwood plays a tough marine sergeant in Heartbreak Ridge, next. I got my mind set this is your sister, Julie. Hi, Julie. Welcome to the outside. Look, who's talking? Why, that too. The way I see it, there's us, and there's them. With the voices of Bruce Willis and Roseanne Barr. Isn't it great, sweetie? Your brother with Pippi. Big deal, I made a duty. Who's kidding who, huh? Look who's talking to the premiere, Sunday at 9. Prepare to be shocked by what you read in The People Tomorrow. Maria Ward is a normal, happily married mother. Three years ago, Maria believed she was abducted and assaulted by aliens. Now, Maria talks about her horrifying injuries that stunned the doctors. It will shock you. And you will not be alone. Alien Britain only in The People Tomorrow. The People Paper. Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? That's original. Emerson High, 1975. You're in my class. I was your teacher. What helps keep skin looking young? Oil of Ulay twice a day. It's quickly absorbed deep down, moisturizing where you need it most. Miss Fitzhenry? Bugsy Brown. Oil of Ulay twice a day. Wow. The secret of young looking skin. Cousin William, I don't suppose you know why Purcell gets the dishes so very clean? No, but I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Well, the Purcell grips the crease. Then it holds it in the water, so it can't get back on the plate. You see? No. Run me through that again. See? No. No. Well done, Billy. Uh, Purcell washing oh. up liquid. Grips grease for good. Hi there, egg pickers. Ha <laughs> I eat them whole. Not half. Oh, is that my cue? <laughs> my cue. Well, I part the yellow first, then the brown, 
But I never let the weight go down, of course. <laughs> it's great, that. Mm, mm, I've started, so I'll finish. Mm, 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 mm. Am I on it? Oh, good. The producer is in... Oh. All good things come to an end, even the MFI sale. So get moving. The sale ends on March the 2nd. The Coca-Cola Cup semi-final second leg. There's everything for Sheffield Wednesday to play for in the return game against Manchester United. Oh, Nielsen's back pass. Giggs might take full advantage of this. United, go ahead. One of this season's top cup ties, Wednesday at 8, only on ITV. Now, Clint Eastwood stars in the military drama Heartbreak Ridge. <laughs>